joining us on YouTube for the Top Gun Maverick global premiere red carpet live. I'm Josh Horowitz welcoming you to the USS Midway aircraft carrier in San Diego, California for a premiere like no other for a movie decades in the making. Top Gun Maverick lands in theaters on May 27th, continuing the legacy of the 1986 blockbuster. And believe me when I say this, guys, this movie will blow you away. This is the event of the summer, and the energy here is off the charts. Take a look at these fans who have joined us on the flight deck of this ship, once the largest in the world, and now after 47 years in service, a historic museum. For all of you watching, it doesn't get any better than tonight. All the stars are here. Miles Teller, Glenn Powell, John Hamm, Jennifer Connelly, and of course, the man of the hour, Maverick himself, Tom Cruise will be here. And trust me, his entrance will be worthy of that iconic character that you do not want to miss it. Plus, we've got a sneak peek at the film, a special flyby of F-A-18 fighter planes as featured for real in Top Gun Maverick and much, much more. So much more that I couldn't do this without some help. Let me interest, introduce you to Domiti Pongo, who may be just as obsessed with this movie as I am. Do I have that right, Domiti? Josh, obsessed is an understatement. Hey, it's Domiti Pongo from MTV News, and let me tell you, everything about Top Gun Maverick will remind you why the world fell in love with the original. I don't use the word perfect often, but this film is truly the perfect follow-up. But make no mistake, this movie stands on its own, and the stakes are even higher this time. Not just for the characters, but for the actors themselves. For this role, these actors went through months of intense pilot training to get them ready to fly with the U.S. Navy. So when you see them in those jets, people, it is real. This is not CGI. And we can't wait to talk to them about their experience. The chemistry and competition between Maverick and this new crew is off the charts, and that's why I'm catching up with Jay Ellis, Danny Ramirez, Louis Pullman, and Monica Barbaro, who's leaving some of these boys in the dust, which, by the way, is something that my wingman knows a whole lot about. That's why it's a perfect time to check in with my girl, Simone Boyce. Simone, what's up? Domity, I'm gonna tell you right now, I am trying so hard to play cool here, but I mean, come on. The energy is electric, this setting, this cast that's about to walk down this carpet any second now. I mean, the moment we have all been waiting for is finally here. And that's what today is all about. The fans who have kept the spirit of Maverick, Iceman, and Brother Goose. What type of goose? Alive after all these years. And the entire cast and crew of Top Gun Maverick kept you in mind as they pushed themselves and the craft of filmmaking to the limit to bring us that perfect harmony of newness and nostalgia. Yeah. But it wouldn't be a Top Gun premiere without a little friendly competition, okay? You know what I'm saying? We've got a class of elite Top Gun super fans right here, and we're gonna test their knowledge to see who is the best of the best, all right? Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be him? Is it gonna be you? You? I don't know. We're gonna have to wait and see. And everybody watching at home, we want you to play along too. All right, now back over to Josh, who is standing by with one of the stars from Top Gun Maverick. Thank you, Simone. I am indeed. This is, of course, Mr. Glenn Powell, AKA Hangman. Hey, Glenn. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing pretty well. You must be doing all right, I'm thinking. It's been a good day. It's a good day. It's a good week. Congratulations. We were just reminiscing. We've been talking about this movie for so long. Just put me in your head for a second. We're finally here. What does it feel like to deliver this film finally? You know, we made this movie. We poured, you know, blood, sweat, tears, and, and puke, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to make this a reality. And I got to say, um, I'm just so proud of this whole cast, the yeah. whole crew, for putting everything they had into it. Because when you see it on the screen, there's just nothing like it. It's going to blow the world away. Now, are you allowed, is it cool or uncool to cheer yourself when you're watching this film? When you're watching the film, it's Glenn Powell. Can well, you Hangman's got an ego. He'll cheer on himself. <laughs> no, no, no. I got to say, this is a, it's a, a rare kind of movie where you watch it and you don't hate yourself. You literally go, this is why you make movies. It's, it's big, it's epic, it's adventurous, it's romantic. It's got everything you want, and I just can't wait to unleash it on the world. When you, when you got the gig, how did you celebrate? I, you told, were telling me the whole family is here with you. Who do you tell first? What's the celebration like? You know, uh, less than 24 hours after getting this gig, I sang, you've lost that loving feeling to a bachelorette party in a bar. <laughs> That's how stoked I was. <laughs> this guy is deep in research, always. <laughs> well, let's talk about the research, because this is not your run-of-the-mill film. Anybody that knows a Tom Cruise film, he takes the authenticity very seriously. Just give folks a sense of the prep 
for a role like this. Well, as you know, Tom Cruise doesn't half-ass anything. Nope. Uh, Tom put together an entire flight program for us where we started in the Cessna, went to the Extra 300, the L39, then the F-18. And uh, without Tom on this movie being our flight instructor, our mentor, our friend, uh, there's no way we can pull it off. And, you know, Tom is Maverick in real life. He's yeah. as cool as it gets. Um, last night, Monica Barbaro did Corden and hopped on a jet to San Diego. He beat her on his motorcycle here. Come on, just... <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise. What's the lesson you take from working with Tom Cruise? There's no one else like him in the business. How do you, what's the learning for the next gig? You know, the thing that makes Tom really special is he cares that everybody wins. Yeah. And you really watch this movie and every single character in the movie wins. Everybody looks cool. And the movie, it's never about him. It's about the final product. And, and when you see what's on the screen, there's truly never been anything like it in the history of film. And that's what Tom does. Talk to me about the last thing for you. I got emotional watching this movie. I got emotional like within the first like minute of yeah. watching this movie. Um, I think that's going to catch audiences by surprise. You know, uh, the uh, I got to see it with a live audience for the first time the other day, and the amount of, of fist bumping yeah. and sobbing <laughs> and high fiving. You know, it's a, it's an emotional movie. It's a, it's a it's a movie that people hold so dear. Uh, this movie means so many. So many things to so many people, including the Navy, who was so incredible, letting us use their bases and their toys. And uh, I, I, I really feel, Tom always said, it's like hitting a bullet with a bullet, and I really feel like we hit the impossible mark. You really did. I'm so happy for you, man. As I said, we've been talking about this forever. It is so surreal and perfect that we are here together for this moment. Have a great night, man. This has been a long time in the making, and just have a blast in there. No, I'm proud of you. You're one of the good ones, man. I Thanks, appreciate Glenn. cheering us on. Thanks, Glenn. Let's go over to Domi T with one of your co-stars. I think this guy uh, goes by the name John Hamm. Have you heard of him? I think I've heard of a guy named John Hamm before. Make some noise for John Hamm, people. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> now, John Hamm plays the role of Cyclone. This is an iconic film. Can you tell me your first memory of the original Top Gun? I remember going, I was, I was 15 years old in St. Louis, Missouri. I remember going with my friends, and as, as soon as the movie ended, I wanted to see it again. Yeah. That's the excite. That's how exciting it was, and it just meant everything about that movie meant cool to me, from the sunglasses to the leather jacket to the motorcycles to all the planes to every everything about it. And uh, to be to have the opportunity to be right here, 36 years later, is pretty impressive. Uh, doing the same thing, I love it. Well, it's surreal for me too. It's crazy because most Top Gun fans can recite a few lines verbatim. Do you <laughs> know a couple of lines by heart from the original? I think I know one or two. I don't know. Hit me know. with it. Hit me with it, John. I don't know. Maybe these guys can help me out. I feel like I feel the need. I mean, it's, it's, it writes itself, folks. What is it like to be a part of a franchise as iconic as this one? It's surreal. It's, it's really uh, it's surreal for me, you know. Uh, but as, as, as weird as it is for me, it has to be 10 times weirder for, for Tom. I remember my first day on set, I said, uh, how does it feel to be back on the same set, wearing the same costume, playing the same character 30 years later? And he was like, I love my job. And I was like, well, that's exactly the right answer. I love, I love your job, too. Well, I love the job that you do as Vice Admiral because you have the job of wrangling Maverick, who is a renegade. He is as cocky as he was in the first film, though he's grown a lot. What was it like bossing Tom Cruise around on camera? Let's be very clear. I wasn't bossing Tom Cruise around. You I was bossing, bossing Maverick, Maverick <laughs> around. They're very, very, very different things. Fair, fair. Uh, but yeah, but someone's got to, you know, someone's got to make the rules and someone's got to break the rules and it, you can't have one without the other. So that's that's a big part of the dramatic tension of the film. Yeah, and that dramatic tension is even seen in the way you have to kind of harness someone who is as cocky as they are talented. You've been a teacher before. Yes. Have you ever dealt with someone who had the personality of Maverick? And how'd you bring that experience to this character? It's a lot easier to wrangle a third grader than it is <laughs> anyone like Tom Cruise. But yeah, it's uh, there's a similar skill set to handling uh, uh, children and uh, after school programs than it is to handling these pilots sometimes. You talked a lot about how much of an inspiration he was and how much advice, conversation that you guys had off camera. What are some things that he told you that will stick with you? You know, his, his work ethic is unparalleled. He's the first guy on set, he's the last guy to leave. He works every day, works harder than anybody. And his enthusiasm for filmmaking, especially a film like this that he has such a rich history with, is infectious. So mostly it was about coming in, having a good time, enjoying your work, 
and then going home, going to sleep, waking up and doing it again. And it's, uh, we're very, very lucky to be doing what we get to do, especially when it ends up on places like this. So I'm just happy. Well, I'm going to let you finish doing your thing and interacting with folks. But before I let you go, what do you think the folks out here will take away from this film when they finally see it in theaters? I think they're going to have the time of their lives, and I think they're going to have it again and again and again. That's right, John. You couldn't have said it better myself. Simone is having the time of her life with the best fans in the business. Simone, what you got going on over there? Hey, Dome and T. All right, we promised everybody a little friendly competition. It's time. It's time to really see who is the cream of the crop over here. All right, so who's going to be my first victim? Let's see. You know what? I think we're going to go with John, right? Right. John? Yeah. I mean, I love this whole look. I love what you're working with here, John. You got to represent Wolfman. Wolfman, absolutely, a nod to the original. All right, so we are gonna do this little game called Finish the Quote. So I'm gonna give you a little help and then you gotta take it from there, okay? okay all, right. all right. Remember, boys, no points for... What? Second place. Okay, okay, I see you, I see you. Take me to bed or blank, blank, blank. Lose me forever. Oh, oh, put a little sexy on it too, okay. Son, your blank is writing checks your body can't cash. Wow, my ego's always running. Ah, you know what? You know what? This is a this is a true Top Gun fan right here. Okay, okay, this is a really good one. You can be my blank anytime. Wingman, come on. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going because I was blank. I was inverted. <laughs> Like it's nothing, just effortless, effortless. You're not gonna be happy unless you're going mock to with your blank, blank, blank. Well, I have no hair, but my hair would be on fire. There we go, there we go, that's it, people. All right, one more for you, John. That's twice, I want some blank. But. I mean, flawless, flawless. Gomez, take it away. Oh, I am here with Monica Barbro, who plays Phoenix, and we were just having the time of our lives right here. It looked like you had the time of your life making this film. Tell me, what was it like being a part of a film that's iconic and the training that it took to get ready for Phoenix? I mean, it's like nothing else you could imagine. There's no other film like this. And of course, we had to do our own stunts to make it as epic as it is. And, um... It wasn't without its challenges, but we had a really great time. What were those challenges? Give me, give me the D. Oh, so many. We had to learn how to fly. We had to learn, you know, how to swim and not drown. We had to learn how to operate cameras from inside a, a jet uh, while pulling Gs. And I mean, I well, wait a minute. You guys on. were your own camera folks inside those jets. Yeah. Well, we had a beautiful camera team yeah. who set us up for success. And then, yeah, we had to. Uh, press the button and make sure they were all rolling because we only had one chance. Word on the street was that you were one of the standouts in terms of being able to pull this off, adapt to this. Can we hear from Monica for being one of the toughest fighter pilots in this film? Tell me what that experience was like working with those Navy uh, uh, top flight uh, pilots. It was incredible. I admire all of them so much. Shout out to Dragon and Bacon, wherever they are, who flew yes. me in the movie. Um, I love all of them, and um, we we owe them so much for this movie and, and for so much more. Any fun memories with, with Dragon and Bacon that'll stick with you, even after this film? Well, for one, the fact that they're here and we get to celebrate together. Um, and yeah, I mean, not a single moment of me up there was without them, so, you know, this movie feels as much theirs as it is mine. And, it, and you own it. Before I let you go, gotta ask, what was something you felt was important to bring to the character, Phoenix? That is one of the dopest call signs in the entire <laughs> film, by the thank way. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, she's such an incredible woman, and I was so lucky that Paramount and Tom and Jerry and Joe, everyone really cared about making her a strong, capable, talented woman who, you know, she's a fighter pilot. She just yes. happens to be a woman. That's and right. She's the best. And you just happen to be awesome in it. Make some noise for Monica Barbaro. <laughs> we got to head over to Josh, who I hear has some tricks up his sleeve. Josh, what are you up to over there? I don't know what you could possibly be talking about, Joe Mati. Oh, maybe this. We are just moments away from a historic arrival from Tom Cruise himself. 
Guys, I've seen some dramatic red carpet arrivals, but I'm pretty sure this one is going to beat them all. But first, we have a very special treat for everyone here and at home, an online exclusive sneak peek from Top Gun Maverick. Check this out. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to basic fighter maneuvers. As briefed, today's exercise is dogfighting. Guns only, no missiles. We do not go below the hard deck of 5,000 feet. Working as a team, you have to shoot me down or else. Or else what, sir? Or else I shoot back. If I shoot either one of you down, you both lose. This guy needs an ego check. We'll see to that. Sir, what's say we put some skin in the game? What do you have in mind? Whoever gets shot down first has to do 200 push-ups. <laughs> Guys, that's a lot of push-ups. Well, uh, they don't call it an exercise for nothing, sir. You got yourself a deal, gentlemen. Fight's on. Let's turn and burn. Fanboy, you see him? He's not beyond the radar up ahead. He must be somewhere behind us. There it is, an exclusive online sneak peek at Top Gun Maverick opening very soon for you guys. Uh, trust me, it is worth the wait. This movie is awesome. Speaking of waiting, I think you guys have waited long enough. It is time for Maverick himself to make his big entrance approaching the USS Midway right now. Guys, Tom Cruise is approaching in a helicopter. Here he comes. Take a look. That is not just a helicopter. That's Tom Cruise in a helicopter. As you guys probably know, Tom has had his pilot's license since 1994. His love of aviation probably rivals that of the legendary Maverick himself. Tom took matters into his own hands on this film. He helped train the cast members on a flight program. He designed and supervised it himself. Also, <laughs> this is a fun fact that I was blown away by. The P-51 Mustang in the film is a plane that Tom himself owns. And yes, this is an entrance that only Tom Cruise can make for only a film like Top Gun Maverick. Here it is. The best entrance I've ever seen at a red carpet. Tom Cruise in a helicopter. what I call an entrance. Give it up, folks. Tom Cruise, a.k.a. Maverick, joining us on the USS Midway. Domiti Simone, I'm in a little bit of shock. Domiti, what do you think? There are a lot of things I expected to see in my lifetime. Tom Cruise landing on a red carpet was not one of them. Now, this film is a love letter to aviation just as much as it's a love letter to cinema. Josh.
Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom, we went over this. I was going to pick you up in the Uber. It was going to be really simple, but you had to just show me up. <laughs> you don't do anything simple. Um, I've been on many a red carpet. That's the best entrance I've ever seen. This, this movie is epic, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Top Gun Maverick, many years in the making. Let me just say, yeah. it's great to see you. It's good to see you, buddy. This moment right here to see everybody at this time, no masks, everyone. This is, this is uh, pretty epic. Very epic. An epic Wonderful. moment, an, an epic right, moment in an epic Hi, career. Bob. How are you? <laughs> uh, Top Gun, an epic film um, that we've been talking about a sequel for years. Why was now the time? You guys have been thinking about this forever. Why is the, the time now for Maverick? It was really now or never. It was a moment. You know, we've been looking at how how to tell this story, and I've been trying to figure it out and thinking about it, talking with Jerry and. You know, talk to Chris McCory and Joe, you know, when we were doing Oblivion, Joe kept talking about Top Gun. And, you know, I just, we started to, I was always thinking of the technology, how it would evolve to be able to give the audience that kind of experience. And everywhere around the world, they just, they wanted to see this movie. And it was, it was now or never. And finally, the story came together in a way and, and tech, uh, technically what the things that I felt that we could give to an audience, a global audience, was something that I thought, okay, well, if we're gonna go in, we're gonna go in now. Yeah. Well, it is a marriage of like the most amazing technical know-how and also the emotion. I mean, I, I was telling some of your cast members, this film is an emotional roller coaster. I was like, I, I, literally, I, I didn't think I was gonna cry during a Top Gun film, Tom. <laughs> well, if you remember the first one. I mean, poor you know, people, yeah, people forget, it was yeah. very interesting. One of the things we did, you know, I sat everyone down, we went through the whole movie together. Like, you gotta understand, everyone thinks, you know, what Top Gun is, and of course it's a, it's this great summer experience. And what it became to audiences and through the generations is something I, I couldn't even imagine at the time we were making it. I knew it was special, but who knows that, how it transcends the you know generations. But it's a drama. Yeah. It is a drama at its heart, and it has that kind of storytelling that I cut my teeth on, that I love seeing with, with those kind of characters, all of these great characters. And, it was so much fun working with Joe. There's a cast. Look at you guys. Come on, man. What a cast we have. This cast is amazing. Where are these guys? They're unbelievable, these guys. Look at them. We've been waiting a long time. A long time. It's like this moment. I'm so happy for them to have this moment. Finally, it's coming out. So it's beautiful. You put got a very talented group. You put this group Brother. through their through their paces. You put them through training like no other. I mean, you know, we know you demand authenticity. Talk to me about what you wanted to bring to the aerial fight sequences in this film that we've never seen before. Well, it's just really the characters because motion, you know, it's not just it's not just action or stunts, it's character and it's story. That is king. Story is king. And what we talked about early on is, you know, when you look at for, you know, the first Top Gun, one of the things that I had was in my contract that you had I had to fly in the F-14 and be filmed in the F-14. That was a stipulation. I always wanted to make movies and be an aviator. And as we went through it, I made Fallout, and I was always in the back of my mind, I'm going, when, when I was doing, even before Fallout, I was American-made, going technically, and how's that story, and what can I do, and where's that technology, how can we tell this kind of story? So it was always there. Top Gun was, it was daunting. I'm not gonna say, this is, it wasn't like, oh yeah, let's go do it. It was daunting. It's, the movie means, you know, a lot to me, a lot to my career, a lot to the studio, a lot to audiences. You know, at a certain point you make a movie, it's not mine, it's everyone's. And how do I do this? And how do we do this? And Jerry and I would talk about it. And so here we are today. And these guys, you know, they just rose to the occasion. I sat down with them each and said, look, this is what we're going to do. And then I showed them what we were going to do. <laughs> and I remember that day, you know, I went, I did an early test to show them the aerial stuff. And I, I would have them sit in the uh, meetings with me because I wanted them to see every step of it. The briefings, story, you know, we had to work with them to set them up to win. I want to I wanna see them really win. And when they're in the F-18, that they feel confident and comfortable and that they are their characters. And... So we had to go through and they had to understand about editing and lighting. We also had to work with the other fighter pilots who were flying the aircraft to teach them about film, lighting, cinematography. But I had them there to a pl point where by the time it's their turn to be in the F-18, they were running the show. They, I wanted them, uh, and I just sat back and they would run the briefing. You know, Joe, all of us would sit back and they, they were in control and they knew their characters, they knew the story. And that's what I want. It's like you get people to that stage and 
let them go. Let you know. I want to know their ideas. I want to. I want them in control of their own performance and destiny. And and they just, they're amazing. I mean, each one of them. What about for you stepping back into this? But your all's face is the first time you saw that. I'll never. I will never forget it. <laughs> I like see. okay, this guy's like he is for real. <laughs> like we knew he's for real, but he's for real, right? <laughs> <laughs> what, what about for you? The deja vu of it all must be intense to step back into the character. Like, is there a moment that stands out to you? Putting the leather jacket on, getting on the motorcycle, an emotional moment, stepping back into character. There are so many. Coming back here, uh, just Jerry and I sitting down together and watching the film together for the first time. And we hadn't seen it in decades. And there are many emotional moments, sitting down with the actors, uh, figuring out the character and talking about it. There's, it was, there's set, you know, and the actors, they go like, they're looking at me going, what's it like for you to come back? And I'm, I'm looking at them, I'm looking at this. It was, it was emotional. Yeah. And it was something that, look, I was just, I'm very grateful because it's not easy it's not easy to try to figure out for an audience and deliver because I, I want to deliver for them. Right. And I'm not, I love entertaining an audience and I love learning and pushing all of my skills as a storyteller and an actor. And, and it's also, it's the beauty of making a movie. It's not me, it's us together. It's the accumulation of talent and knowing how to discover and bring that talent together and everyone shines and that's that's the dream and that an audience will go and then appreciate it and the kind of reaction that we've gotten it's the it's the moment ago you i just want people to be happy and i want them to feel like yes yes i know so many people sat in that audience going okay you know don't choke. Yep. You know, well, don't you, blow it. You did not blow it. You delivered. Good, if, there, you. if there was a camera trained on me during this movie, you would have seen me grinning for two hours, <laughs> Tom. You really delivered good, this good, one. Good, good, good. Um, congratulations. Thank I don't you. know how you're going to top the entrance for Mission Impossible. Maybe you'll jump out of a volcano into my arms. We'll have to figure that out. That's not a bad idea. Let's work on it. Yeah, I you got a year that. to work yeah, on you it. You know what? I, I'm all up for ideas. All right. Okay, okay, excellent. Congratulations again, That's man. Great Enjoy to see you. Great to see you. It is, man. Great to see you. Good to be out, right? Thank you all. Thank you. Tom Cruise, everybody. Buddy. Thank you. Joe Mattia, let's go over to you with Mr. Jay Ellis, I believe. Oh, yeah. I am with Jay Ellis, who yeah. portrays Payback. First of all, can we just let that moment breathe for Tom a moment? Tom Cruise, everybody! Tom Cruise, everybody! Tom Cruise! <laughs> Jay, we were saying this feels like a fever dream, doesn't it? This is, this is what it felt like every single day filming this movie. I mean, that's what it's like working with Tom and working with this cast. Every single day was a, was a dream, man. Tell me about those moments. He talked about empowering you guys to feel like you were owning the process, owning yeah. those briefings. Yeah. Walk me through that process. Yeah, you know, we started every morning with a briefing. You start two hours before your first flight. You get in there with Joe, uh, with our editors, with all our, our department heads, and you go through whatever you needed to capture for that particular flight. And Tom would kind of break it down for you, what he did on his flight, so you knew what you were going up there to do. And then you go over, you get dressed, you get your G-suit on, they, they throw you in the plane, you go through a bunch of checks, they shoot you off the tarmac, and all of a sudden you're in the air doing like seven, 800 miles an hour. And then it just kicks in, man. Like, it, it's exhilarating, it's, it's you know, beautiful. Uh, you're also acting, you got a job to do while you're up there, you're rolling the cameras, you're doing your makeup, uh, you know, you're, you're telling the pilot, like, oh, I need to do this maneuver. Can you, can you turn the plane this way? Can you do a barrel roll? It was crazy, every part of it. Now, you study for every single role, yeah. consummate professional. Uh, How hard do you study when Tom Cruise is the guy that's on set with you? Oh, man, I thought I, thought I was the best student in Hollywood until I met him. <laughs> <laughs> that man studies more than anybody, and it, it's inspiring. You know, you realize that Tom is filming a movie mm -hmm. while also studying movies at the same time, and it just never stops for him. He's constantly you know, looking to improve. And like he said earlier, like he really, he takes the responsibility of the audience very true to heart. And he's constantly thinking about new ways to bring story and character and obviously amazing ways to shoot film. What is so amazing to me is that this role throws some curveballs at you that you could never predict. Yeah. And I gotta hear this story from you firsthand. I hear that when you get in the jet, yeah. you gotta wait about an hour, yeah. take some time. You might have had a little too much to drink. Yeah. Water, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> you have to believe yourself in the jet. 
And you've got this. They told you that. They told oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> Tell me about what happened in the jet when you have to relieve yourself, and the jet doesn't necessarily have a lavatory, nah, does there's, it? there's no lavatory in the jets. Um, <laughs> but shout out to Wash Job. Uh, he's not here today, but he was my pilot who flew me. Uh, there's this bag that they send you up in the air with. It has this little gel in it. I don't know if this is what it's actually for, but it's what I used it for. I get up in my first flight and immediate three minutes up, and I'm like, "Watch job, I gotta go to. I think I gotta pee, man. Can we turn around?" And he's like, "Nah, we we can't turn the jet around so you could go pee. You gonna have to figure it out." And I'm like, "Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool." So how do I do that exactly? And he's like, "I'm also flying the jet, so I can't I can't help you with it." <laughs> Man, it took me like 15 minutes to figure out trying to unzip my vest, unzip my G suit, unzip my flight suit, oh, get Lord. the bag in a place where I'm not, you know, going to the bathroom all over this $70 million airplane, you know, I, <laughs> get it all wet and then it just malfunctions and we go down. It was it was one of the most challenging things and I peed every <laughs> single flight. And There's not one flight that I did not pee on. Well, I would have been peeing myself if I had to sit in your <laughs> yeah, shoes. Yeah. Before I let you go, yeah. you come from a legacy of people who yes. have served. Yes. Your father and grandfather were mechanics yeah. in the Air Force. Yeah. What does it mean to share this moment with your family? And what's something from this experience that will carry on with you yeah, this long is, after this is over? This is the ultimate honor, man. You know, I, I, I thought about when we drove on to North, North Island for the first time, it immediately took me back to my childhood. It immediately took me back to, you know, going on and off base, showing my ID every single day to go to school, you know, going shopping in going uh, to I used to get in trouble all the time and <laughs> we get sent home from school and have to like be at the hangar with my dad who again was a mechanic while he's sitting there working on jets and to come full circle now and be able to do this and honor the men and women who sacrifice you know they, they give so much of themselves and 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 so much time away from their family like it's the it's the ultimate honor to be here and to be able to do this and I'll I'll never forget that and also these guys gave so much of themselves to us while we were filming because they wanted us to look good and they wanted to, you know, they wanted to make sure we knew everything we needed to know when we were up in the jets. And, you know, that's just, it's priceless, man. Man, well, this moment is priceless for me and we have more priceless moments for you. Simone is standing by with another member of the cast. Let's go, Tarzan. I got my boy Tarzan Davis over here. Yo, oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all a little something right now. This is your first premiere. Yes. First live interview. Yes. First movie with Tom Cruise. Yes. I mean, how hype are you right now? Woo! I mean, does that describe how hype I am? I think so. I think I got it. Yeah. I, I can't hear any more in this here, but it's, it's all good. Okay, so, <laughs> so your name is Tarzan. Yes, ma'am. Your call sign in the film, you play one of the fighter pilots who's getting training from Maverick. Your call sign in the film is Coyote. Yes, ma'am. Tarzan, Coyote, I I'm sensing a theme here. Are you just, you, you wild? You can't I'm, be tamed? Like, what's going on? You know, Tom knew that. When he, was, when he was selecting me for the process, he said, this young man is wild. <laughs> I want him. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll live up to the name of Coyote. And I think I did that. I hope I did. You'll see when the movie, you know, you're watching the movie. You have this incredible backstory. You actually started out as an elementary school teacher. And so you're going from the classroom to the red carpet. Like, this must be so surreal. Let, let, let me tell you something. I used to be a first grade teacher, right? Okay. And uh, I've always wanted to be an actor. And, and I told my students, I said, hey, follow your dream. That was my, my thing for them, follow your dreams. And one of my students asked me like, yo, what is your dream? And I was like, well, I'm a teacher, you know? And they're like, no, when you were a kid. And I said, well, I want to be an actor. And it was like, and, and when I said that, I was like, I'm not following my dream. Right, right. So I decided uh, I'm gonna stop teaching and I'm gonna pursue it. And I told them, yo, Mr. Davis is, is, is following his dream. I'll go back with the updates and I'll see what I can do. And, and, and now we're here, so I can go back and I can probably say like, we did it! Yes, you can! <laughs> oh my goodness, and this is not your only film with Tom Cruise. You're also working with him in Mission Impossible. Yes, we are working together in Mission Impossible 7. Oh boom, 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 boom. my goodness. Okay, so you flew, you learned how to swim in this film. I mean, what's next? Skydiving? Like, what can we expect? And, and what? I expecting... Uh, yeah, Mission, Mission Imp Impossible yeah, you... 7. I'll joke about when people ask me what to expect about Mission Impossible 7. I say, I always say, like, oh, if I tell you Tom's going to run up in here and take me out the room, he can really do that now because he's here. <laughs> so I'm definitely not going to tell you what's happening in Mission Impossible 7. All right. Now, we're not going to get on Tom Cruise's bad side. We already know <laughs> no. 
right? Okay, so I'm going to send it over to Josh, who is standing by with Jennifer Connolly. Josh, take it away. I All right. Indeed. Thank you, Simone. Yes, the one and only Jennifer Connolly. Jennifer, welcome to a really chill, normal red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty extraordinary. Uh, it's very exciting to be here today. Talk to me. Look, you've been in every kind of film, some very impressive work over your career. But when you get the call, Top Gun, Tom Cruise, I mean, is that a no-brainer? Yeah, you know, I was called by Joe Kaczynski, the director, who I had worked with before on a movie called Only the Brave. And right. I loved working with Joe. I think he's a great director. I was flattered that he wanted to work with me again on anything. And then he said, it's for Top Gun. What do you think? I said, yeah, I'm in. Uh, he said, well, let me read, let you read the script. I was like, OK, I mean, I'm in. But yes, I'd right. like to read the script. <laughs> and then uh, I read the script and thought they had come up with such a great story, such a great idea for it. And, it, you know, we meet Maverick in such an interesting place in his life. In some ways, you're the perfect person for this part, this movie, but in some ways, a person who has a fear of flying in a Top Gun movie, what are you thinking, Jennifer? Well, originally when I signed on to do the movie, um, there were no flying sequences for me. Right. I play uh, Penny Benjamin. She uh, runs the hard deck bar that all the naval aviators uh, frequent, but she doesn't fly. She's not a pilot. Uh, and then actually I was doing a scene with Tom. We were in the plane but we were just supposed to sit on the tarmac. And he started talking about how great aerobatic flying is and have I ever done any aerobatic flying? And I, <laughs> then I was I thought I should ask him, am I about to do any aerobatic <laughs> flying? And he said, well, it's gonna be really elegant and graceful, just some graceful roles. Um, so no that's how I found out. It's a graceful role, it's terrifying yeah, roles. But I have to say, yeah. he's a great pilot, right. you know? I mean, you saw what he just did. <laughs> We've all seen all the things he's done. So that was nothing for him. So are you ready on the next Top Gun to uh, get your pilot's license and fly for yourself? Well, I think we should enjoy this one. <laughs> You're like, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's enjoy this one first. <laughs> what is it like for you to see this? I was telling you when you came up here, like, it's just so satisfying. This is a movie that just, it just works. Um, when you watch this film, what's it like to see yourself in this context? I mean, do you know it in your guts? Like, oh, this, this just works? It felt celebratory to me. Yeah. And I feel like that's what we want right now yeah going to a movie theater and seeing a spectacle of a movie that also has a lot of heart that pulls you in and it's moving you know yeah. uh, i think it's deeply satisfying do you feel left out that you don't have a call sign have you thought about what your call sign would no, be you want to give me one well you could go with oscar you got one of those at home. oh wow i mean you might as well <laughs> flaunt it <laughs> I mean, you're not allowed to give yourself that, but I can give I you mean, that. I mean, I'm dressed in gold today. There you go. It's perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Um, talk to me a little bit about, I mean, you alluded to this. It's been a, a crazy couple of years. Just like getting this in theaters. This has been delayed, and I think like now we know it was for, it was, it was the right thing to do, because this needs to be seen with an audience, seen in a theater. What all of those actors did with all of that training to, you know, be in those airplanes and withstand those forces and, um, bring that visceral action uh, to the movie, yeah. it has to be seen on a big screen, yeah. you know? It's just so, it's it's just so powerful. It's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. so I, I, I'm really happy that people are gonna be able to go to the theaters. It is epic, it is emotional. Congratulations, as always. You hit it out of the park, as you always do. Thank you. Uh, thank you for stopping by and enjoy thank the night. You, Josh. All right, go. let's go over to Domiti. Domiti, who do you, who do you got? I'm standing by with Bashir Salahuddin, who plays What's Hondo. Up? Hey, hey, hey. Man, listen, this is amazing, this yeah. experience. What is it like to be a part of a franchise this iconic? I mean, it's a dream come true. You know, over 30 years in the making, uh, the filmmakers really wanted to get it right. Um, and they made us understand that, you know, we weren't just actors working mm. on a movie, but we were like people who were chosen and selected for what we brought to the table to make sure that the whole was greater than the sum of its parts. And I think this movie, it's gonna take fans on a roller coaster ride they won't forget. Well, what's crazy is we all know Tom Cruise. Yeah. But we don't all expect Tom Cruise to know us. It's and true, I hear that true. Tom Cruise was a fan of Bashir. You know, uh, it's interesting. Me uh, and my boy Charles, uh, who plays Warlock, both from South Side of Chicago, we we're talking about it. You know, Tom rolls up one day, you know, he shot Color of Money in Chicago. We we're talking about our favorite restaurants, Deep Dish. And I told him I had a show based in Chicago called South Side. He was like, well, send it to me. I was like, man, you know Hollywood people. All right, whatever, man. All right, I'm sending it to your assistant. 
two weeks later, he's like, where is it? Is it here yet? And I'm like, oh, God, I better actually do this. Send it, and he ended up calling the writer room wow. and just telling them how much he loved the show. He was telling them jokes he liked. So it was a special moment to know that, you know, this person who really is at the apex of, of entertainment still was, like, showing us love, man, and showing love for what we were doing on South Side of Chicago. Now, I don't want to give too much away. First sure. of all, that story is beautiful as a South Side Chicagoan there myself. There it is, there it is. Come on, but, represent. But you and Tom share an emotional moment in mm -hmm. the film. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the moments you and he shared on set that will stick with you long after this experience. I mean, just like the one I said, just talking about Chicago, but also just, you know, listening to his stories about filmmaking. You know, so many people don't understand that, you know, not only is Tom a great actor, but he's also a student of film. You yes. know, he understands the cameras, lenses, bounce cards, uh, the boom mic, all of it. And so to watch his vocation, his confidence, and his understanding, it was inspiring for me. I was like, man, I got to step my game up because this, this guy really gets it. He, he is thorough. He is He's thorough. a very thorough person, yes. Before I let you go, I think what really comes across is the camaraderie between this new mm. cast of pilots. They have the chemistry. Yep. Talk about the chemistry that this cast has on and off camera. I mean, you know, I think the chemistry uh, is born from some of the amazing things that they had to do to prepare for this movie. I mean, you know, going underwater, like learning, you know, how to accept and do and deal with those G-forces and all that stuff. So, you know, and then off camera laughing about it and talking to us about it. And so I think the chemistry we and the bonds we made off camera are evident on camera. And I think the audience is going to really feel like, yeah, yeah, these guys have been through some stuff and uh, they came out better for it. Man, we came out better for it mm -hmm. watching this film. I thank had a you. chance to see it, and I'm a big fan, Bashir. Oh, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much for stopping through. We got to toss it over to my man, Josh, who has more in store for you guys. I do indeed. Thank you, Domati. I've got the director of this film, a small little film called Top Gun Maverick, Mr. Joseph Kaczynski. Congratulations, man, on this thank one. Thank you very much. It's very exciting to be here. Oh, my gosh. So talk to me a little bit about when you step into the shoes as a director of a film like this that's been over 30 years in the making, people have been anticipating it. What's the first task? Do you go back to the original and try to figure out how what the secret sauce is or what? Yeah, you know, the first time I saw the film, I was a 12-year-old kid, saw it on the big screen in uh, May of 86. Uh, went back, watched it now with a couple of films under my belt and uh, really looked at the film and realized it's a... Uh, it's a drama. It's yeah. a drama wrapped in an action film, and, and that was the film we wanted to make here. So then it was a matter of just coming up with a story that was focused on Maverick, a character-driven story, a rite of passage story, and what would be uh, appropriate and interesting for a guy in his 50s. So that was the first task, was kind of cracking that. You uh, worked with Tom, of course, on Oblivion. Um, what is it that he brings? I mean, I know it's a simple question everybody asks you, but like, what is the X factor that Tom Cruise brings? Is it just like the authenticity, just going the extra mile? Is it all of the above or what? It's passion. Yeah. Passion for filmmaking. And that gets shown in so many different ways, you know. Um, he, his enthusiasm is infectious. It, it pushes the whole crew, everyone to deliver the best they can. Obviously, this is a very, very special project, and we're going back to the uh, jewel in the crown of, of, of Tom's career, the one that kind of kicked it all off. Yeah. Uh, but having him, having Jerry Bruckheimer producing it, I mean, I, I felt like I was in, you know, working with the best. The aerial sequences are insane. I mean, they make the original look like a cakewalk at this point. I mean, you, well, I don't know about that. But I mean, look, I mean, you've gone to the next level. Talk to me about like, what do you take the most pride in, in terms of what the audience is going to get out of those sequences in the film? What I'm excited about is I think we were able to capture just a little bit of what it's like to be a naval aviator. Yeah. And the way we did that was we we actually put six IMAX quality cameras in the cockpit. Uh, we had the best of the best flying for us for this film. We had real Top Gun pilots flying these sequences. We had the actors in the jets for real going through months of training to prepare themselves. We worked with the Navy for 15 months to, to design this camera system. Uh, so we're going to give you a, just a a hint of what it's like to be in one of these machines. Um, the audience will get their money's worth. Suffice it to say, I was saying to all of your actors, including Tom, it's just an emotional experience. Yeah, it's, it's got all the bells and whistles, but like your heart is gonna be in the pit of your stomach the whole film. It's, it's a wild ride. Congra Thank congratulations, you. man. Thank you very, very much. It's good to see you, man. Uh, coming soon, Top Gun Maverick from Mr. Joseph Kaczynski. May 27th is the day, but for now, Simone, I know you have one of the actors with you. Who you got? That's right, Josh. I'm standing by here with Charles Parnell, who plays Warlock in the film. Now, congratulations. We were just talking about this. Oh, this movie is so good, and the fans are going to be so, so excited. But I, I want to talk about this moment that they're already... Yeah! 
they're already excited right here. We can't even contain the thrill and the energy right here. But I want to I want you to take us back to that moment when Tom Cruise addresses the cast and crew as production is ramping up. What did he say to you all and how did it impact you? Tom says, I want this to be a great film. We can't try to make a copy of Top Gun. We have to make a brand new film, carry the story forward. This story can't be great unless each individual in the movie is great. So I'm putting all my heart and effort into making each one of you shine, making sure everybody wins. We've talked a lot today about his work ethic, about his excellence, about his craft. What does he bring out in you, in everyone around him when he's on set? Well, first of all, he brings his reputation because you know if you're getting into a Tom Cruise movie, you better bring it, right? It's like going with a great athlete on a team. And then when you get there, you're constantly being reminded and encouraged about how great you were the day before. So you go into each day, lift it a little bit more and lift it a little bit more. Yes. You feel like a jet taking off, sort of, you know? Yes. Now, I know that you have a pretty special early Top Gun memory. Do you remember when you first saw the film? I do. I remember the next day more than I remember the film. Because okay. I went out, played basketball, and I'm quoting this movie, and I'm sh taking shots and saying all these lines, and my boys are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, give it a minute. You'll Just know. wait. Two weeks later, everybody knew what I was talking about. I said, dude, did you see Top Gun? I'm like, that's what I was quoting to you two weeks ago. It's like, man, it's the most awesome movie I think I've ever seen. You know, oh. I had never seen anything like that until that point. You were ahead of the curve, but and you're here now. Congratulations. Yes. Yes. So fun to be here celebrating this with you. All right, I'm going to send it over to Doma T. And I'm standing by right now with Lewis Pullman, who portrays Bob and Top Gun. Make some noise for Lewis, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And we're going to have to make even more noise, because I understand you have some family here. Yes, that's exactly right. I've got my great uncle, Melvin Hurwitz, here, who is in the Army Air Corps. He's 96 years old, absolute legend. And my mom, Tamara, my brother, Jack. So it's pretty special for me. What is it like to share this moment with your family, especially with the great uncle who served this country? Well, I'm just excited to talk to them after we watch the movie. I think it's going to be a good conversation. 96 years young, it's great to meet you. Now, did, uh, did he give you a hard time for having a call sign, Bob? I don't think I've broken the news quite yet. I think I was waiting for the movie to do that work for me. Well, your call sign is Bob. How did that come about? Is there a backstory to the call? I mean, we've got Phoenix. We've got Hangman. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of uh, room for interpretation. You know, is it baby on board? Is it big old balls? Um, I don't know. It's up to who I'm talking to in the moment, you know? Well, I know what it stands for, and you guys will know, too, when you see the film, but yeah. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. Talk to me through the training for this one. What was it like getting in one of those jets for the first time? It was one of the most uh, challenging and fruitful things I've ever gotten the chance to do. I mean, I was pretty sure that I was incapable of doing what, what they were asking of us. But then once I sat down with Tom Cruise and he really laid out how, th this plan, this, this training program that I don't think anyone else could have really designed as well as Tom because he knew exactly what was needed. He gave us e everything that we needed that I think he, he had hoped that he would have had on the first one. So it was the most uh, uh, just like intricate and... Uh, yeah, he just lifted us up, and it was um, it was something that I maybe never would have dreamed of doing had had Tom Cruise not been lifting us up. Is this something that you think you'll take with you throughout the rest of your career? I think so. Yeah, def I mean, there's I'm stealing so much from Tom Cruise uh, every day. <laughs> I was like a sponge on that in this movie, man. I was just soaking it all up. I mean, he and he was generous with his wisdom and his information. He was just really took us all under his wing. It was special as hell. Before I let you go, you're a fan of the first Top Gun, I'm sure. sure. Yeah. Any callbacks, without giving away too much, to the original film, what was your favorite callback? Favorite callback is pretty simple, pretty static shot of Tom on the motorcycle, watching the F-18 just rip over his head, beautiful sunset, looking hot as hell, looking like a <laughs> baller, and just like his love for aviation just like radiating out of him. And it pours through in the film, and it took a lot of vision to execute this film as beautifully as these guys did. And that's why Josh is standing by with one of the men responsible for that vision. Josh? Indeed I am. A legend in his own right, the mega producer that is Mr. Jerry Bruckheimer. You go back to the beginning with this, man. Congratulations. Put me in your head right now. Is this like a big deja vu moment or what? Well, it's always great to work with Tom and to be able to work with him now yeah. and to make this movie and hold it for audiences to see it in a big theater is such a thrill for me because that what this movie was made to see on the big screen and when you see it it's exciting it's romantic it's funny it's got emotion and that's what made 
movies work. Yep. Besides all the phenomenal areas, aerial stuff that Tom coordinated and worked out with our actors. You go back to the beginning with this, of course. I mean, the simple question, and it's not a simple answer, I would imagine, is what took so long? Why, I mean, I get, you obviously did it in the right way, but have you been noodling on this for years to try to figure out how to do a Top Gun sequel? Well, I think the first four or five years we noodled with it, but then our careers kind of took off in other directions. Tom did a lot of wonderful movies with other people, and we went off and done a, did a bunch of pictures and television in between. So about I think about 10 years ago, this started to percolate again. Yeah. And five years ago, Joe and I went to Paris. Joe had an idea on how to make this film. And he pitched it to Tom. He had a, a poster. He had a visual book, a look book. And Tom heard the pitch, and he picked up the phone and called the heads of Paramount and said, I want to make another Top Gun. And that's how it all started five years ago. One of the many impressive things about this film, obviously you have Tom at the center, and that is gold, but you also have this exceptional young cast, the next generation of amazing talent. How difficult was it to assemble Glenn and Miles and Monica and figure out who your aviators were going to be? Well, we have to tip our hat to Joe Kaczynski. He's the one who sat with our casting people and interviewed hundreds of actors. And what's interesting, we lost some actors because when he told them what he wanted to do in the jets, they said, wait a second, I'm not going to do that. I have a hard time getting in a commercial jet, let alone put me in an F-18. So Joe and Tom, really Tom designed this program where he put these kids in four different planes until they hit the F-18. And it took three months. It took Joe 15 months to design so that six cameras could go in the F-18. He had to go through the all the engineers of the Navy through the legal process with their lawyers because what happens if the camera came loose, right. somebody got hurt, there's liability, but they figured it all out. And what you see on the screen is the five years of work that it took to bring this movie to, the, to an audience. And Tom loves making movies for audiences. Yep. That's what his thrill is, just, just like mine. I look forward to sitting in a packed house and watching people enjoy Top Gun Maverick. Well, I've said it before, I'll say it again, man. This one delivers like no film I've seen in some time. Uh, my best movie going experience in years, bar none. Congratulations on the film, man. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you having me. Of course. Enjoy the night. Domati, what do you got going on where you are? Joshua, not lying. That was definitely the best movie experience in years. Danny, normally when you're in a position like this, oh, by the uh, way, this is Danny Ramirez. What's up, y'all? Fanboy. I'm a fanboy of you in this film. What is it like to be out here and to be in a film with Tom Cruise? Is this well, real or what? Man, it, it just it's crazy to, to just hear Jerry be talking over there on that platform and look around and just see everyone that has been here from day, some, some day one people that have helped us out from from when we started learning the, how to be on the Cessna to the L-39 to the extra 300 to the, it's, it's, un, it's unreal, man. Wait, you're speaking Greek to me. Yeah, sorry. So, I'm so, saying a bunch of planes that we were able to ride on through training, but... um. Yeah, it, yeah, so you guys worked yeah. up to the FA-18s. Yeah, yeah. How, was, how, did that, how did that process work out? Well, Tom set up this unbelievable training program for us to, to get us confident up there in the skies, and um, I actually started being afraid of flying when I signed on to the project, and by the end of it, I was just hooked, man, so... To, to be on here in the USS Midway is just unbelievable. Wait a minute, so you were nervous to sign on to this, knowing that you Nervous? I lied about not being afraid of flying. <laughs> I had to sign the waiver saying I was not afraid, and I was absolutely terrified. I, used, I have to take two glasses of wine and my Bose headphones uh, to take a commercial flight, so that for me to even think about the F-18 was just, it was, it was not possible until it was possible. Your hair has grown since this experience. <laughs> How have you grown as a person since this experience? Wow, well, uh, it's, uh, it's one of the most exclusive film schools to be on a project like this with the, the dream team of filmmaking. I think working with Tom, Jerry, Joe, Chris McQuarrie, the cast on this project is just, it's been unbelievable. So I think I've grown in ways that I won't be able to articulate, but mm. I'm excited to share um, once you guys see the film and then from that point forward, then just the rest of my career. Danny Ramirez, people, yeah. Josh, over to you. Uh, thank you, Domiti. I am here with Mr. Christopher McQuarrie, writer and producer of this film. Mr. McQuarrie, congratulations, yes. man. Thank you. This film, it's a miracle. Like, I don't know how you made this film, how you guys did this. Talk to me about how you honor the original and make this its own thing. Uh, that is the key word. Uh, when, when people were first talking about this, and they were, they were talking about the challenge of topping the original movie, there was never an effort to do that. It was always just to honor the original movie. And, and what we talked about from the very beginning was character and story and heart. All the, all the action in the jets and everything, that's all gonna, that all comes with the package. It's, 
do you care about the character? Yeah, because all that stuff is easy too, right? The, uh, the jets and all that. That's just not my purview. So. Yeah, you were the director on this one. You're like, oh, Joe, no, Joe's no, got I was it. Like, I, there were days I turned to Joe and I said, I am so glad this is your problem. Because <laughs> this guy's got some easy films, those Mission Impossible films he's working on. But <laughs> talk to me a little bit about when you went back to the original. Yes. Like. Uh, were there things you needed to wear in? Obviously, this, again, honors the original, and it has yes. a very clear through line with the original. What did you see when you went back that you wanted to wear into this? It's a really good question. We were we were talking about it early on, and, and you could hear people talking about a different kind of movie than I think Top Gun really was. It had, it, it had become something in people's minds. And so I said, let's all go back and watch it and just talk through the movie and see what kind of movie it really... Let's watch Top Gun as though we were 17 years old right. before it was Top Gun. And and I had Jerry Bruckheimer on one side of me and Tom Cruise on the other, and the, the movie started, and they started talking to each other. It was like the world's greatest DVD commentary. <laughs> and we very quickly... We started to pick up on things we had totally forgotten about the movie and other things that were much bigger in our memory than they right. really were in the film. And it, and, and it gave us the permission, I think, to go our own way and do something different. What do you do about the fact that the original is like one of the most quotable movies of all time? Yeah. Now, you as a screenwriter can't write a screenplay being like, oh, they're going to quote this in 30 years. Don't oh. even try. Don't is even that try. the answer? Oh, that's it. Thing? If you, it's the same thing. Any movie I work on, when you work on a sequel or you work on a, something that's based on a book, when you get caught up in trying to top it, all you're doing is making comparisons to something. Right. And you're never gonna you're never gonna match it. And we early on we did. We had very blatant references in the movie, and they just weren't the movie. The movie didn't really want them. What's the key to coming up with a call sign that works for a pilot? Because again, they're iconic from the first one. Yes. Iceman, Goose, Maverick. What do you yes. do in the next round? I'm very blessed in that the call signs, everybody had their call signs before I came in. Got it. And I didn't have to come up with any of them. <laughs> I, I would not want that pressure. What about cracking where Maverick is today? Because you yes. can go any different way, but you yes. extrapolated from the first one and figured out where you would be today. It was really about, you know, A, he still had to be in the Navy, and B, we didn't want a guy who used to be Maverick and and has to find a way to be Maverick again. Right. Which we, we just said, no sad math. And it, <laughs> it's it's got to be a story about a guy who's who's where he wants to be in life, and he doesn't he doesn't realize what's missing in his life, and uh, and that that really became that really became the touchstone. And Tom was Tom was just had a very astute sense of who Maverick is as a character. I I won't tell you the secret ingredient, but Tom isolated it, and that that made every scene simple. He's there's there's one. Thing about Maverick that he that he shares with every great aviator, okay. and and that really helped define every scene. Well, I think the word for this film, among others, is satisfying. It's just it just works, oh, as, as you can tell thank by you. now. Congratulations on it. This guy just probably escaped an edit room or shooting 16 Mission Impossible movies. Get back to work. I will. We want to see the next I two. Will. Uh, Christopher McQuarrie, everybody. Simone, who do you got with you? Hey, Josh, here's the thing about Top Gun, about these characters, about this story. It is a family affair. So many of us have memories of watching the original film with the people that we love. And that's exactly why I'm here talking to Meredith, because she brought her dad today to the premiere. He came all the way from Ohio, right? And Meredith, I know that you have a very special connection to Top Gun in your family. Tell us about it. Yes, um, this movie has meant a lot to me throughout my entire life, and my dad has really introduced me to everything in military and air shows, and so much so that I convinced my husband, Andy Ringness, to let me walk down the aisle to the theme song of Top Gun for our wedding. Oh my gosh, that's so good, that's so good. And then we have a son whose middle name is Maverick. Okay, I mean, that's amazing. Josh, I'm gonna check in with you. I know we've got a quintessential Top Gun moment coming up, another one, what's going on? We've got so many special moments in this show, and it is time for something that is extra, extra special. We are about to receive a flyover from Strike Fighter Squadron 154, the Black Knights, flying FA-18F Super Hornets, same type as in the movie, guys. They'll be flying in a diamond formation. The pilots would like to thank the chiefs and sailors of VFA 154, the backbone of the U.S. Navy, whose hard work ensures they're safe and ready to fly every time. You take so long to tell me you need me. I see that you're bleeding. You don't need to show me again. But if you decide to, I'll ride in this life with you. I won't let go till the end. So
here with Mr. Miles Teller. Hey, Miles. Hey, buddy. How's it going, my oh, man? Just a normal night in San Diego. It's good you know to it see is. you. It is legitimately awesome to see you. We yeah. go way back, and to see you in this context, in this film, in this environment, I mean, it's a moment. You've had some special moments, but how does this compare? Yeah, I mean, this, this is really special. Uh, even when I first moved to L.A., one of my really good buddies was in the Navy, so we used to come down here quite a bit. Um, I've just always loved San Diego and to, and to you know, be a part of the, the sequel to Top Gun and to be doing this on the Midway and on the carrier and just with everybody here, it's really, it's really fantastic. Take me back, okay, when you're in the audition room, you're-, you're I love reflecting with you. Let's reflect. It's one let's, of my favorite Let's sit down, let's take a do. second. It's just, do you remember when- uh, When you were a child, Miles. <laughs> no, but- uh, First memory. <laughs> <laughs> I knew someone was just gonna be that guy and it was gonna be you. There you go, I'm jazzed up. I know, we both I'm are. jazzed up. We both are. Yeah. Um, but when you're, when you're auditioning for a film like this, opposite Tom Cruise, I mean, you're a confident guy, but like, did you feel like you had it in that room that you like had what it took? Oh, no, 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 no. I was so, I was, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's layers to nervousness. I think when your mouth is just so dry, your body is telling you this is a big moment, even if you're not, kind of putting it all together. But no, I mean, it was Joe Kaczynski, it was Tom, and it was, you know, and Jerry. And I had to do a, a scene in this film that is a pretty, is, is a pretty big scene. And, um, but you know what? I knew going into it, honestly, that I, when I was thinking about meeting Tom, like I, I, I knew I wasn't really gonna be nervous. I, and it was true, he's very disarming. Yeah. And also just, I think when you do scenes just with really great actors, you're not thinking about anything else because they put you right in that moment. Yep. And then hopefully you're just able to just be present and that type of thing. But no, I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big swing in room. Yeah. You know, TC and, and Bruckheimer <laughs> and, you know, Joe, so. Well, this whole movie is a big swing. Like, it's like, how do you make a sequel to Top Gun and make it work as well as it did? I mean, what was your reaction when you finally got a chance to see the movie? I mean, were you as emotional in a different way watching this movie as I was? Well, you know me, I'm a crier. You are. I am a crier. At some point in this interview, Miles will cry. <laughs> That's why I got the glasses on. Yeah. That's why I got the glasses on, <laughs> save it for the close up. <laughs> but no, Tom, I mean, Tom, the way he described what we were trying to do with this film is that we were trying to hit a bullet with a bullet. Right. And that really talks about how precise we need to be yeah. to make a sequel to Top Gun 30 some years later. Uh, and, and to be able to have that film sit on the shelf next to the original, that's, that's extremely difficult. And I just felt like I was able to benefit from all the work that all these people did really before I ever showed up. Yeah. You know, it was all there in the script. Uh, Tom and so many different people in the writers, you know, McCory and, just, you know, Jerry and Joe, everybody spent so much time. And uh, I just really felt like we all benefited from that, from, from that leadership. What's the aspect of the training, the legendary training already that's gonna haunt you till your dying day? Like which part, because this sounds oh, dude, like intense. You have, you have to pass this thing called the dunker, <laughs> where they- so It doesn't sound good. Does it not? It doesn't <laughs> sound nice, There's right? There's no way the dunker is fun. What if I said it like, the dunker? <laughs> Still not cool. Is that softer? No. Yeah, it's tough. What's the dunker? I don't even want to talk about it. Anymore. No, I want to. This is the crying moment. Okay. Yeah. So they, you get, and this is what naval aviators have to pass for overwater survival training in case you have to eject over water. And you're in the pool all day and you have to pass a written test and do all of these kind of things, but it leads up to the dunker where you get strapped to a chair and then you get blindfolded. Oh. And then it's simulating if, if you were to be in a, plane kind of still in the, attached to the seat once you land in the water. 
So you're connected to the chair, and then you're blindfolded, and they slowly start submerging you in water. Yeah. You take your last breath, and then it very slowly starts to turn you upside down. So now you're blindfolded, you're underwater, you're upside down, you're strapped to a chair, Just and so you then know, you have to get out. That's what it feels like to interview you. Exactly what you described. That's how I always feel talking to you, Miles. It's hurtful, Josh. No, no. <laughs> I feel like we've had a lot of good laughs. No more. I feel like we've been doing this for a long time. I haven't seen you in person in years. And I if you get Miles, it out. it's like doing the dunker. <laughs> and then you have to explain what the dunker is to people. You're getting too big. No, You're no. You're just getting too big. Not in the right way. <laughs> <laughs> um, back in San Diego, where you shot portions of this, what's your memory of San Diego being here shooting the film? <sighs> I mean, like, I've been coming down here for a long time. Yep. I always love the... You know, the, the, the military references, you know, military, some that, that runs in my family. I've, I've been able to portray these service men and women a couple times, and that's something that sticks with me. I remember, though, as soon as we finished our beach football scene, right. my agent had sent me a, a American flag chocolate cake <laughs> for the day, day one of filming, but I could not eat that cake. Just I could not touch that cake right. until we finished that scene, and I just remember tearing into that cake, <laughs> and it was so good. I started with the stripes. Move my way up to the stars. <laughs> it, was, it was romantic. <laughs> yeah, because you don't just have like a, any kind of shirtless film. You have to succeed the Top Gun shirtless. I know, and Goose in the original had his shirt on. I know. So that was an option, but... You could have honored your dad and I just know. worn like a, a I just, sweater. I couldn't find the right shirt. <laughs> Sometimes it's harder to pick out clothes than it is to just go shirtless. <laughs> I am in all earnestness very happy for Thanks, you, my friend. This, this it, movie is amazing. Congratulations. Enjoy the night. It's been thank a long you. time coming. Thank you, and thank you for doing this. We, we appreciate it, you know what I mean? It doesn't, none of this stuff really feels the way it should if, you know, if, if you're not doing your thing and everybody here, so I appreciate it. Yeah, we're gonna go off to the dunker now, me and Miles. Let's good, dunk good, it, baby. <laughs> good to see you, buddy. Enjoy the night. Stay mad. All right, thanks, man. Uh, Domity, Simone. <laughs> This is insane. <laughs> Domiti, um, talk to me about what's going on where you are. I am speechless. Miles Teller says he's a crier, but he's got nothing on Simone Boyce, who teared up when Hold My Hand by Lady Gaga played during you, that flyover. You just told everybody like that? You just put my business out there yeah, like that? It was supposed to be between Listen, us. Listen, I'm in my feels, okay? <laughs> Top Gun, the anthem, the Lady Gaga track, it all gets me in my feels. Wes warranted, and that's why so many of you need to see this movie in theaters. If they bust out the big guns for the red carpet, you can only imagine what in store when Maverick himself is in the cockpit. This movie is made for the big screen. In fact, the San Diego Civic Theater was converted from a traditional theater of the performing arts into a state-of-the-art premiere venue is that true? with Dolby Vision projection and a Dolby Atmos sound system just for the Top Gun Maverick premiere tonight. Yes. And we couldn't be more honored to be a part of this piece of cinematic history. Simone, how crazy is this? Listen, today was surreal. We got to see Tom Cruise land on, in a helicopter, on a ship. I mean, we got to see this beautiful flyover. Here's the thing, like, this movie is so phenomenal. It's such a spectacle in every way. They just don't make movies like this anymore, folks. And they'll never do red carpets like this again. Right? <laughs> I mean, and it's more than just a homecoming for Maverick. After a two-year pause, this really feels like a comeback for cinema itself. It's the kind of movie that will make the world fall in love with movies and Top Gun all over again. So to close this love fest out, I'll send it back to you, Josh. Thank you, Simone. This, gu this guy's has been epic in every single way. I want to thank you all for joining us for the Top Gun Maverick global premiere, Red Carpet Live. Thanks again to my buddies, Thilma T. Pongo and Simone Boyce. You guys killed it. Top Gun Maverick drops May 27th in the United States and most other countries. Check your local listings. We hope you've enjoyed our sneak peeks at this epic film today. As I've said before, the wait is worth it. You'll be thrilled. You will laugh. You will cry. This one truly delivers. See it with your friends and family. Thanks again for watching, and thank you, San Diego. What do we have here? Yeah, here I thought we were special. Fellas, this here's Bagman. Hangman. Whatever. What the hell kind of mission is this? Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they gonna get to teach us?
Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. Let me be perfectly blunt. You are not my first choice. You are here at the request of Admiral Kazansky, AKA Iceman. He seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. With all due respect, sir, I'm not a teacher. Just want to manage the expectations. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. And we're off. Here we go. In three, two, one. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. You think up there you're dead. Believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Someone's not coming back from this. Those are your pilots. Anything happens to them. Smoke in the air! Smoke in the air! You will never forgive yourself. No turning back now. Fun yet?